Hey guys, in this video, we'll be looking at how to find the area under a curve using integration. Let's start with this question. First step is to always identify the boundaries of the region. There are two regions here. Let's call it A and B. If you look at region A, this region is bound by the curve as well as the x-axis. And therefore, we know that we have to find this area by integrating the curve with respect to x. The curve is represented by y dx. So if we are integrating with respect to x, then we integrate y dx. The second thing to figure out is the limits of this integration. And the limits will be here and here because this is where the boundary ends on the x-axis. So once again, if we are integrating with respect to x, the limits will be from the x-axis. And the limits here are given negative 2 and 0. Most of the time, you would be asked to find this yourself as well. You just have to look for the x-intercepts of the curve. So here, it is negative 2 to 0. This is how we find the area of A. However, since we are integrating with respect to x, areas that are under the x-axis, below the x-axis, is actually negative. This value of the integral that you get here will be negative. However, areas cannot be negative. And therefore, we need to add the modulus sign. The magnitude is still the same. However, the value must now become positive. And this is how we find the area for A. Now let's look at B. B is bounded by the curve and the x-axis as well as this line. And so now we know since one of the boundaries is the x-axis, for B we are going to find the integration of, we are integrating with respect to x, therefore we are integrating y with respect to x. And the limits of integration, 0 to 1. This is the limit, 0 to 1. And B is above the x-axis. Therefore, its value will be positive. The value of this integral will be positive and therefore there is no need for modulus. Let's find the areas. The area for A will be equals to modulus integration of y. y is this x square plus 2x. So integration of x square plus 2x with respect to x, with limits of negative 2 to 0, the whole thing modulus. Let's work this out. This will be equals to modulus of, so now we do integration using the formula that will be x cubed divided by 3 plus 2x squared divided by 2. I've done a video on how to use the integration formula. I'll leave that in the description below. You can watch that after this video. And now, after we've used the formula, we write the limits at the side here, negative 2 and 0, and then modulus. So now we can simplify this. This 2 divided by 2 is just 1, and so we can write this as x squared. And now we are ready to substitute the limits in. So substitute the upper limit first, substitute 0 in first. So we get 0 cubed over 3, which is just 0 plus 0 squared, once again, is just 0. This whole thing is minus negative 2 cubed over 3 plus negative 2 squared. Key this into your calculator and you will get modulus negative 4 over 3. And therefore, this becomes just 4 over 3 units squared. And now we can find the area for B. Let's focus on the area for B. This is equals to integration of, again, the curve is the same curve, which is x squared plus 2x. x squared plus 2x dx with respect to x. Limits this time are 0 to 1. No modulus. And so we do the same thing. When we integrate this, we will get x cubed over 3 plus x squared. 0 to 1, the same as earlier, 
and now we substitute the values inside therefore this will be equals to 1 cube over 3 plus 1 square substitute 1 as x minus 0 cube over 3 plus 0 square which is just 0 and so you add this together and you will get 4 over 3 units square and therefore what is the area under the curve here the two areas combine so therefore the area area will equals to what we got earlier 4 over 3 units square 4 over 3 area of a plus area of b which is also 4 over 3 units square so plus them together and then you get 8 over 3 unit square this is how we get an area between the curve and the x-axis. Now let's look at an area between the curve and the y-axis. We apply the same principles here. Check the boundaries first. Let's call this A and B. So for A, the region A is bounded by the curve and the y-axis. So this time it's bounded by the y-axis. Therefore, we will be integrating this. A will be integration with respect to y and when we integrate with respect to y we integrate x x dy and now we need to look at the limits once again because we are integrating with respect to y the limits will definitely be on the y axis and so we need to look for these two values these are the limits how do we look for these values these are the y intercepts and how do we find the y intercepts this is already in the intercept form Therefore, the intercept will be, so if we want to find the y-intercept, x is equal to 0. And therefore, y, y minus 1, y minus 4 equals to 0. Now, we know that x is equal to 0 or y minus 1 equals to 0 and y is equal to 1 or y minus 4 is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4. So now we have all our y-intercepts, that is 0, 1 and 4. And so we can label them here, 0, this is 1 and this is 4. And therefore we have our limits, that is 1, 2, 4. 1, 2, 4. However, when it comes to integration with respect to y, you have to look at the area, if it is on the left, of the y-axis this is a negative region all the integrals in this region will have a negative value if it is on the right side then the integrals will have a positive value so again with area there is no such thing as a negative area therefore we need to use modulus so that we will get a positive value and this time I'm going to do it together so then we would add B so the area for B will be on the right side it is bound by the curve and the y-axis. Let me just clear that up. It is bound by the curve and the y-axis. Therefore, we are also going to integrate with respect to y. So we are going to integrate with respect to y. If we are integrating with respect to y, we are integrating x, x dy. And then the limits are 0 and 1. So 0 to 1. This is on the right side of the y-axis, therefore its value will be positive. There is no need for a modulus sign. So let me just change this to the total area. And now we have to perform integration. So when we are integrating x, this is already x in terms of y. So this makes it easier. However, when we want to apply the formula, it is difficult to apply it when it is in the intercept form. We should first expand this. So let's expand this out. X is equals to Y into, I'm going to expand these two first. This will become Y squared minus 5Y plus 4. And then expand again Y into all this. So you get Y cubed minus 5Y squared plus 4Y. And now we are ready to integrate because now we can apply the formula easily. So this is equals to modulus integration with limits 1 to 4 of y cubed minus 5y squared plus 4y with respect to y. And then we add integration of the same 
integration of y cube minus 5y square plus 4y with respect to y with limits of 0 to 1. And now we can perform the integration, apply the formula that will become y to the power 4 over 4 minus 5 over 3y cubed plus 4 over 2 will become 2y squared limits 1 to 4 and we do the same thing here so we know that we will get the same thing because we are integrating the same thing but this time the limits will be different that is 0 to 1 and now don't forget the modulus and now we are ready to substitute so when you substitute the values inside this will be i'm going to write out the full equation here this will be modulus in brackets this will be 4 to the power of 4 over 4 substitute 4 first so times 4 cubed plus 2 times 4 square and then we have to subtract substitution with 1 that will be 1 to the power of 4 over 4 minus 5 over 3 times 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 square close the modulus and then we have to add this one here so substitute 1 inside first that's 1 to the power 4 over 4 minus 5 over 3 1 cube plus 2 1 square and then from here we have to minus substitution with 0 so substitute with 0 0 4 over 4 minus 5 over 3 0 cube plus 2 times 0 square this is a lengthy one and so the answer here you should get 71 over 6 unit square now let's take a look at an area that is between a line and a curve like this a line that is not one of the axes and for this area this region we have to use subtraction what we are going to do is we are going to take the area between the curve and the x-axis so it's going to stop here it's going to be bound by these two lines as well we need to find them later so we are going to take this whole area by integrating the curve with respect to the x-axis and then we are going to subtract this area. And how do we find this area? We can find this area by integrating the line with respect to the x-axis with the same boundaries. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's look at the curve first. This area will equals to the integration of the curve, which will be we are integrating with respect to x. So it is y dx y here is this for the curve so we're going to integrate negative x squared plus 4x plus 7 dx with respect to x limits we have to find the limits the first limit we know is 0 the lower limit the upper limit we have to find and how do we find this upper limit the upper limit is the intersection point the x coordinate of the point of intersection between the curve and the line and how do we find the point of intersection? We have to use simultaneous equation. So we take this as equation 1. And we take this as equation 2. We are going to sub 1 into 2 and find the value of this intersection point. Let's do exactly that. So therefore, negative x plus 7 will equal to, after we sub, 1 into 2. We will get... Negative x plus 7 is equal to negative x squared plus 4x plus 7. And we can work this out. Write our general form first. x squared minus 5x equals to 0. And therefore, factorizing x, we get x, x minus 5 equals to 0. And now we have our two points of intersection. That is, either x is equal to 0, which is here, which we already have identified or x minus 5 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 5. And now we know that this value here is 
5. So the limit is going to be 0 to 5. And then we need to subtract integration of the same with the same limits of the line negative x plus 7. This will be the orange area. So we're going to subtract the orange area out. This will be with respect to x as well because our boundary is the x-axis. And so since they have the same limits, we can use the characteristics of definite integrals and we can combine them together. And so we can write this as the integration with limits of 0 to 5 of negative x squared plus 4x plus 7 minus, so now we're going to subtract the second function, which is the function of the line, this one. So minus negative x plus 7 with respect to x. And so now we only need to perform a single integration. Let's simplify this first. So this will be equals to integration with limit 0 to 5 of negative x squared 4x plus x plus 5x. 7 minus 7 is 0 with respect to x. And so you can see now it becomes a much simpler function to integrate. And so as usual, we do our integration, apply the formula, negative x cubed over 3 plus 5 over 2 x squared, it limits 0 to 5, substitute 5 inside, this will become negative 5 cubed over 3 plus 5 over 2, 5 squared minus negative 0 cubed over 3 plus 5 over 2, 0 squared, which just ends up to be 0. Put this in your calculator and you will get a value of 125 over 6 units squared. That's it for this video guys. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, do help me by hitting that like button. Thank you very much for doing that. Do share this with your friends if you think it will help them as well. I will see you guys in the next one.